Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Now let's get into it. You've probably heard about the growing ex-Muslim movement. There's the ex-Muslims of North America, the Council of Ex-Muslims Britain, and dozens of others that promote a similar message. Their message is simple to understand and it goes something like this. Dear white people, it's totally okay to hate Muslims because we were once Muslim. They write books about their journey out of Islam and articles about eating bacon, while some even post videos of shredding the Quran into pieces. In this era of global animosity towards Muslims, ex-Muslims have latched onto a highly lucrative grift. They are rewarded with attention and money for telling slobbering racist white suburbanites exactly what they want to hear about Islam. Which is why, surprise surprise, they are partly funded and heavily supported by the Israel lobby. I mean, look at this article here. It was written by Daniel Pipes, a man identified as an anti-Muslim hate preacher within the Israeli-funded Islamophobia industry. Earlier this year, he was asked whether the ex-Muslim movement had played a role in warming attitudes in the Arab world towards Israel. Yes, it does. Uh, I didn't mention it, but in, uh, almost invariably, these ex-Muslims are pro-Israel. Uh, I have yet to meet one who is not. But make no mistake, these ex-Muslims are paid handsomely for their time, because it not only puts Israel, but also right-wing America and the military-industrial complex firmly in their back pocket. I mean, it's not a bad gig if you can get it. Which is why in the ex-Muslim telling of history and the contemporary world, Muslims are portrayed as backward savages, while Western countries are hailed as bastions of enlightenment and liberty. During the global war on terror, they step forward to carry the flag for Western military aggression in the Middle East and Afghanistan. And front and center of his public relations effort was ex-Muslim Ayan Hirsi Ali, who assured the American public that war crimes committed in their name were carried out with noble intentions. But personally, and then again from an intellectually pure way, it's not a war on terror. Um, it's a war on Islam. And I think that is why People like Bin Laden are winning. She made those absurd comments in 2006, a full three years after the United States and its allies had already killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in Iraq, Afghanistan and Pakistan. But there she was, convincing the West that Islam promotes barbarism and savagery while US forces were busy bombing schools, hospitals and wedding parties in too many countries to count. This fantasy of an enlightened West spreading civilization to the Muslim world is not supported by history. It was the Christian world, not Islam, that gave us two world wars, the Holocaust, the atomic bomb, and the communist pogroms. But Ayan knows what she's doing. She's what Arab and African populations under European colonial rule once called a native informant. You've called us slaves. How can you claim to stand for our liberation when you simply repeat the language of our oppressors? This is not the language of solidarity or understanding or freedom. This is the language of patriarchy and misogyny. This is the language of white supremacy. Central to Ayan's attack on Islam is the practice of female genital mutilation, despite the practice having zero to do with Islam and everything to do with African culture but notably only among very specific African tribes, including those who belong to the Christian faith. But if you visit the social media pages of an ex-Muslim organization, you will see evidence of a sustained campaign meant to manufacture a moral panic over this almost non-existent practice. But the campaign is having a devastating effect against Muslims because it's radicalizing economically marginalized white men into violent far-right extremism, like it did for this former street thug with the English Defense League. Because when you see videos of FGM and you see videos of honor killing and stuff like that, and these people have got brown skin and beards, you know, you're looking at it and thinking that's going to come to your country. You see, you're seeing poppies, you're seeing poppies get burnt on our streets. You're seeing, you, you're seeing extremism all over the media. So for me, it, it, it was, it, we thought we was, we was helping. But here's what ex-Muslims don't want you to know about Islam. That Islam, like any other religion, is like a hammer. It can be used to build a home or demolish your home. It all depends on who's holding the hammer. Islam saved the guy you just saw from a life of violence and addiction. Yeah, yeah, I had a really bad addiction with cocaine and alcohol and, and in Islam, it's forbidden 
to to drink alcohol and it's forbidden to take take any drugs which when when you become muslim you submit to to the creator meaning you try to follow the teachings of the creator so coming off alcohol and drugs has, has helped me massively and going forward it's made me into a better person i think better and i do things better but stories like this are interruptive to the hateful and spiteful narrative so to counter this they litter their social media timelines with cherry-picked articles and sound bites to vilify Islam as a religion that's inherently opposed to peace, pluralism and democracy. But while Islam was saving this guy from self-harm, the ex-Muslim movement was radicalizing Anders Breivik into mass slaughtering 78 college students. In his manifesto, Breivik lavished praise on Ayan Hirsi Ali, saying she deserved a Nobel Prize for her willingness to confront Muslim immigrants. I mean, it should be pretty obvious that when actual white supremacists are expressing devotion towards a specific brown person, then something is not quite right with said brown person. You know, like this guy. But look, let me say this. I understand there are challenges in leaving Islam for some Muslims in certain situations. But this is not a challenge exclusive to Islam. There are even Netflix shows about the problems Orthodox Jews face in leaving their religious faiths. The problem is ex-Muslims want the West to believe Islam is responsible for their personal experiences, be it a bad childhood or failed marriage. But these experiences are personal to them, not nearly one billion Muslim women. This hatred you feed puts us in danger every day. It encourages fear, persecution and violence. This is not brave. This is not progressive. This is propaganda. Bravery is not selling lies. Bravery is living through the relentless hostility discrimination and pressure of a world that fears us. A world that you helped to create. So it's time to call out the ex-Muslim movement for what it is. An enabler of anti-Muslim hatred, white supremacy, Zionism and the war on terror. And it must be shunned. Anyway, that's a wrap for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavour by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash cjwellman. We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed.